everybody is talking about AI agents calling APIs for you. I think I even saw an ad on the side of a bus about it this morning. Yeah, it's a pretty hot topic. The more tools you have to call, the more of an agentic system you can build. So let's say I want to tinker with it in my web app or native mobile app. And I like to do that with a minimum of code. Well, Firebase Jenkit may be just what you need. Let me show you. Hi, Naomi. Uh, thanks for joining me today. What do you do here at Google? I'm a developer relations engineer in the Firebase team. My job is to make it easier for developers outside Google to get more done by using Firebase and Google Cloud. That sounds great because I get questions in YouTube comments from developers all the time about how to build AI agents into their applications. Well, good. I hope you're ready to talk about tool calling and agents with our Firebase agent library. <laughs> yes, I have heard a lot about this new Firebase library called, uh, what is it, uh, GenKit? That is right. GenKit is designed to bridge the gap between your AI models and real world applications. It simplifies integrating generative AI into your apps. Very cool. What does GenKit bring to the table? GenKit brings three things. AI projects often use various models from different providers. For example, you might use Gemini for complex queries with a very large context window and Gemma for quick local inference. Jenkit simplifies this by providing a unified interface. You can even use it with models from outside Google with things like the Olama plugin or writing your own integration. That sounds useful. Also, Jenkit makes it easy to define tools that we want our model to have access to through a unified interface called the Find tool. Jenkit provides an observability tool that is integrated with the Firebase console so you can easily see and track when your non-deterministic flows succeed and fail. I love it when things are easy. Uh, could you show us a code example? Yes, let's build a weather app. The user will ask our app a question like this. What's the weather in Sunnyvale, California? The AI understands that question and can call an external API to get the weather in that location. And this AI will use the API to read weather data, but the AI could also call the API to take some action, right? Yes, it can. We can have the AI execute actions on our behalf, like creating a new document, sending an email, or even start a separate task to hand off to another AI agent. There is a good docs page about how to do that with Jenkit. Sounds like you can build some pretty smart applications by using multiple agents taking actions. I will add a link to that doc from the description below. Very good. Today, the AI will only use an API to read weather data. The AI will put that data in a nice human readable text and return it to the user. Let's start building it. Here is an express application skeleton using TypeScript. Our code will go here in index.js. First, I will import the GenKit libraries. Then I'll create a GenKit object that says that the AI should run in the US Central One region. Now let's start building the flow. I'll define what the input and the output schema should look like using input schema and output schema. And what does the Z there mean? That means we are defining the schema using Zod syntax. Zod is a schema declaration and validation library. Oh, right. Uh, I've used Zod to validate inputs for a REST API I built. So those are inputs and outputs. Uh, where does the logic go? That's next. Here I will call ai.generate and tell Genkit which model to use, how to configure it, like what temperature to use, what system prompt to use, and what user prompt to use. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. Yes, and as I'm building this, I can test it by running mpx genkit start at any point. That command creates this user interface where I can enter a prompt like, what is Cloud Run? Uh, there's no response. Oh, I made a mistake. It shouldn't return the empty string. Let's return response.txt instead. Do I have to run my apps uh, all through this dashboard you showed us? 
N no, the command that we ran merely launched the dashboard and listened for a GenKit process to be run. So we were able to inspect our GenKit flows without executing an entire application. This helps you go faster as a developer when you have a tight feedback loop. And it looks like there's the answer to our question about Cloud Run. Very nice. Now, how do we make this into a weather app? First, let's use the find tool to define the function that GenKit will call to get the weather for a given location. It takes name, description, input schema, and output schema. Oh, wow, look at that. Jim and I uh, auto completed the schemas for me. I love it. Then I'll add that function that will run when GenKit invokes this tool. Usually you'd put code here that reads from a database or calls an external REST API, but for now, let's just hard code a temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see, 68 Fahrenheit, that's about 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's pretty pleasant weather. Very pleasant weather. I think it was 68 when I checked outside this morning. Once we have a tool, we can add it to the generate function here as part of a tools array. We can add multiple tools there, and the AI will figure out which one to use based on the tool names and descriptions. And now it will magically work. <laughs> I hope so. Let's see. Uh, I saved the file, so I'll go back to the GenKit user interface. I'll ask about the weather in San Francisco, California. I don't think I spelled that correctly, but Gemini is smart and knows what I mean. And there is the answer, 68 degrees. 68 degrees Fahrenheit would be an unusually nice day in San Francisco. I guess so. And as I'm testing and debugging my flow, I can click View Trace to see what actually happened behind the scenes. Here we can see that made a generate call to Gemini, then a call to the weather tool, which returns 68, and then it called generate again and passed the 68 number to it. Okay, so this seems like a really nice local development experience. Now, when you're done with local development, how do you deploy it to the cloud? I can expose this flow as a public REST API endpoint that a web app or native mobile app could call. I'm going to use Cloud Run for that. To do that, I'll install the Genkit AI Express package. Then I'll import the start flow server function from that package into my code. Then I'll call start flow server from the bottom of my file. I'll tell it which port to listen to for incoming requests. Hmm. Looks like I need to parse the environment variable as an int. Then I'll add some cores options. Ugh, cores can be hard to get right. The HTML and client-side JavaScript may be loaded from another domain, so I'll open up cores from all origins. In a production app, you'd probably want to restrict it to certain domains. Finally, I'll add what flows to start. I only have one called main flow. Your code looks very declarative, Noe. I like that. Yeah, declarative code is easier to get right. Now that I have my start flow server call, I'll deploy this to Cloud Run. I'll enter gcloud run deploy and open it up to anonymous users. It will ask for a source code location. Let's use the current directory. Then it asks for the name. We'll go with serverless expeditions. Then where to run this code. I will pick US Central 1. This will take a minute to run. Let's take a tea break. The deployment finished. Now my flow has been deployed to cloud and it's accessible on the internet. So now you could build a web app or a mobile app that sends a request to your flow? That's right. I haven't built a client app yet, so let's test it using curl instead. The request method is post. I'm pasting the URL where my code was deployed followed by slash main flow, which is the name of the flow we want to access. Then it needs a content type header. Let's use application JSON as we'll be sending JSON data. Then I'll add the payload of the request. It will have a data object, which contains a prompt, which has our question. I will ask for the weather in Mountain View, California. And the result is a pleasant 68 degrees again. I love it when the weather is predictable. All right, so let's recap. Why would a developer want to use Firebase GenKit? GenKit provides a unified interface to multiple models. It lets you define tools that your AI can use to read data or to take action. 
Also, it includes an observability tool so you can see how your AI is performing in production. And it was easy to deploy your GenKit AI agents to the cloud using Cloud Run. That way you don't have to worry about provisioning servers or paying when there's no traffic, right? Yes, that's exactly right. Awesome. Uh, where should I go if I want to learn more? If you want to learn more, I will link some documentation in the description below. There are many more production-ready services built into GenKit, including monitoring of your AI flows, so be sure to check out GenKit and let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for having me on. And thank you for joining me, Noe. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Like Noe said, uh, feel free to ask your questions in the comments. Also, please let me know what you think of this episode. I read every single comment. Until next time.